Hey there, today we're going to take a look at the best logging solution, I think, uh, for an application architecture, uh, specifically one that's running in a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this logging solution is really great. It takes a little bit of work to set up at first using the Elk stack, but once you have this setup running in your cluster, you can listen, scrape the logs uh, for any, any service or any container that's running in your cluster. Uh, and, and freely view these logs uh, and filter on them, sort on them, do any sort of manipulation to them through Kibana, which is a really handy feature. So to see the power of this logging solution, um, let, let me just go ahead and quickly run maybe a Redis image or a Redis, a Redis container uh, in this cluster. So all I had to do is, is I just created the Redis pod, okay? And now if I wanna take a look at the logs, uh, that Redis has generated through standard out. We can see them here if we log them directly, which is great. Um, but what's even cooler now is that if I wanna add a filter, I can look for the container um, name, Kubernetes container dot name in this cluster and say, okay, I only wanna look for the logs from the Redis container. I'm gonna save that. And we can see that all these logs from standard out that we've generated are already freely viewable uh, inside of our Kibana uh, or our Elasticsearch deployment. And you know this could be hosted on a production server. You could share this freely with your team. And it's a super um, powerful logging solution because for each message that gets generated, we get all of this metadata about uh, the container that was running, um, the image that was running. We even get information about the host itself, where the logs are coming from, and of course, the actual message. So this is a really powerful logging solution uh, that takes a little bit of work to get up and running at first, but once you have it running, it's a great, and I think the best way to manage logs in your application. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So to keep things more organized, I'm going to create a separate folder for each one of these services. Uh, and inside of each folder, that's where we'll um, put all of the Helm charts um, so that we can deploy each one independently. So let's get started with Logstash. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and go to artifacthub.io, uh, which is a website that allows us to find uh, open source Kubernetes packages and install them with Helm. Uh, which makes it really simple to kind of get up and running with a lot of these uh, cool technologies, including Logstash, Elasticsearch, uh, Kibana, and Filebeat. So if we just look for Logstash, we can see a bunch of different packages um, that have been deployed. Uh, we're going to use the official Elastic uh, versions for all of these deployments. Uh, so we can see here we have the Logstash Helm chart. So if we go ahead and click install, we're gonna wanna uh, click this link here to download the package content directly so that we can modify uh, these templates a bit. So once you've opened up the download, uh, we can pretty much just take all of the files from the download and then move them into our Logstash folder. Uh, we're not gonna need the examples um, and we're not going to need a make file or readme. But the important part here is that we have our helm chart.yaml, uh, which describes the chart. Uh, and then we have templates. And this is are all of the Kubernetes resources that will be deployed as part of this uh, deployment. And lastly, we have the values.yaml, which allows us to override the information in the templates folder um, with, with what we need. So let's go ahead and do just that. Uh, and what we need to override here is the Logstash pipeline. Uh, and the Logstash pipeline is what tells Logstash uh, where to listen for incoming logs uh, and also where to uh, spit them out to. So let's go ahead and uncomment this out here and then we'll go ahead and remove those braces. So right now we can see it's using an exact input but we want to use the beats input, which tells it to listen for incoming beat connections, uh, which is the kind of connection that file beat will be using. So we'll tell it to listen on port, and then we'll give it a port of 5044. And we'll see in a second, uh, once we deploy, 
uh, this Helm installation, we're actually going to have a log shash service that's listening on port 5044, uh, which FileBeat will send logs to, uh, and that service will uh, uh, then forward traffic to our log dash pod. So now that we have the input set up correctly, we need to set up uh, an output. So our output here is going to be Elasticsearch. Okay, and now we need to specify the hosts. Uh, the hosts. So we only have one host set up, and this is going to be HTTP Elasticsearch master at port 9200. Uh, and similarly, when we uh, deploy Elasticsearch, uh, it's, it's going to include a cluster IP service uh, that will be exposed on port 9200, so that we'll be able to send logs to from log Logstash after they've been aggregated. So this should be everything we need to get Logstash up and running. Let's go ahead now and uh, move on to FileBeat. FileBeat is going to be uh, a Damien set, which is going to be deployed on each node uh, to scrape all of the logs that are outputted on the container runtime uh, in that node. So in this case, we have a Docker container runtime. Uh, it's going to listen to all the logs produced by standard out, standard error, uh, and ship them to Logstash without us having to do anything. So let's go back to Artifact Hub. We'll look for FileBeat. We'll take the official uh, Helm chart, and we'll do the same thing that we did previously. We'll download uh, the zip here, and then we'll just go ahead and move all of the files from inside of here into our FileBeat folder. And I'll do the same thing. I'll get rid of the examples folder the make file, we don't need that, and the readme. So let's open up the file beat values.yaml, and by default, uh, this file beat config is actually exactly what we want to do. Uh, so by default, we're, so this is the input that we've set up here, and uh, by default, if we take a closer look at the Damien set that gets created for file beat, uh, there's actually we're actually setting up uh, a volume mount under var dash or var slash log on the node that filed the file beat Damien is running on. So what that's going to do is we scroll down, we can see we should have uh, a volume mount under var log. So what this is going to do is it's going to provide us um, with the path necessary to be able to scrape these logs on each node. So each container is going to output its logs under var log containers. Uh, and it'll have a log file for each container. So we're telling FileBeat to consume those logs. Um, and then the processor section tells it to add some Kubernetes metadata to each log to tell it about the namespace, the node, the pod we're running on, and so forth. And then lastly, we have the output section uh, where we want to send these logs to. Now, you could send them directly off to Elasticsearch if you wanted to. However, we're using Logstash as our uh, log aggregator. So we're going to change our output.logstash here. And we're going to provide a host section. So, we, so it takes an array. And we'll provide a, a host of Logstash, dash Logstash, at port 5044. Uh, and if we remember from the file beat, uh, set up here, we told it to listen to incoming connections on port 5044. Uh, and similarly, for the file beat output, we're going to send the logs to that same very service, and it's going to be called logs dash logs dash on port 5044. That's going to be the cluster IP that we're sending logs to over TCP. So this should be everything we need to get going uh, with file beat. Next, let's go ahead and set up Elasticsearch. So we'll follow the same procedure that we've done so far. We'll create a new folder for Elasticsearch. And let's look on Artifact Hub for Elasticsearch. We'll use uh, not the Helm version, but the Elastic version here. Uh, and we will download directly. We'll take all of these files here. And we will move them into Elasticsearch. And Similarly, as we've done before, I'll get rid of the examples, get rid of the make file, and the readme. 
So let's open up the values.yaml for Elasticsearch. Um, and if you scroll down, uh, first off, I'm going to get rid of the requests section for Elasticsearch just because um, I'm running this locally on a single node cluster using uh, Docker desktop. So I don't have that many resources allocated. So I just want to make sure that it can actually be deployed. So I don't want to have to tell it to take a lot of resources. And that's uh, really all we need to override. Most of these uh, initial settings here are going to play very nicely with uh, the current setup we have. So it's going to go ahead and create all of these resources when we deploy, uh, particularly the stateful set, which is what Elasticsearch uses. So now the last step in this elk stack is to get Kibana set up, which will allow us to actually have a dashboard to visit to view these logs. So I created a Kibana folder. We'll look up Kibana on Artifact Hub. Let's uh, install the template as we've done before. So we'll go ahead and move all of these files over into Kibana. We'll get rid of the examples, the make file, the readme, and let's open up values.yaml so we can override a few of the options in here. So we can see here uh, we have an Elasticsearch hosts property, and this is set correctly already because this is where the service for Elasticsearch is going to be running on. Uh, Elasticsearch master port 9200. Everything here looks uh, pretty straightforward. The only thing we're going to want to override uh, is the ingress option. Uh, and this is because I want to be able to access uh, the Kibana dashboard uh, through an ingress. So I want to be able to visit it uh, you know, on my host machine locally. So I'll set this enabled to true. Uh, and then we're going to uh, uncomment the annotation out to use the Engi Nginx ingress controller. Okay, and uh, if you're not familiar with uh, ingress controllers and how they work, um, I recommend you read up on that. Um, but really, all you need to do uh, is visit this URL here, uh, and I'll include it in the description, uh, and make sure you just run this one command to make sure that you have the Nginx ingress controller available uh, in your cluster. Um, which all that does is it, is it deploys Ingress Nginx in its own namespace and, allow, and it makes it available as an available uh, Ingress controller. So once that's running and it's available, we can provide this annotation so that it's used. And then for the host here, this is where you would specify the host uh, if you were pr uh, you know, pushing this out to a production server. But in our case, we're just gonna be running locally. Uh, so I'm going to use the default uh, host name. So by default, Docker Desktop, if you have it running uh, like I do, it adds an entry to your hosts file that, that tells this host name uh, to route to localhost, which is what we want because that's where our cluster is running on. So this should be everything we need to deploy Kibana. Let's go ahead and start deploying our resources and work through any issues that may arise. So make sure you have cube uh, kubectl installed and that you're running your your clusters in my case I'm just using docker desktop uh, with kubernetes enabled so we can get pods right now I have nothing in my namespace so I'm in my elk folder and I'll cd into filebeat so I'm going to run helm install filebeat uh, in the path to the values file so once this is deployed um, we should be able to run kubectl get pods and we can see a file beat pod uh, starting to get up and running. This is a Damien set so it's going to deploy a pod on each node that's running. In my case I have a one node cluster just my local machine so that's all that's going to be running. So that's, that's getting up and started we'll cd into logs and then we can run helm install logs dash So we can run the same command kubectl get pods. If we take a look at the services that are deployed right now, we can see that our logstash service actually didn't get deployed, uh, which is going to be a problem because that's where Filebeat is sending our logs to uh, and also listening for incoming beat connections. So let's take a closer look uh, on the logstash values.yaml. We can see we actually didn't uncommon out the service section here. So um, in the values.yaml for logstash, let's just make sure 
that we uncomment this block out so that in fact we do get a cluster IP that's created. Uh, we'll open up two ports. Um, one, this is really the only one that matters. It's the TCP uh, cluster IP um, that listens for beats connections on port 5044. So let's go back and if we run helm uninstall logs dash, this will delete all the resources already deployed. And then we can run helm install logs dash again. Now if you run kubectl get services, we can see our logs dash logs dash service on port 5044, which is what we want. So while that's running, let's go into our Elasticsearch folder and we will install Elasticsearch. We can see that get deployed. And we will lastly go into Kibana, Helm install Kibana, and run that last command. So let's take another look at the status of our cluster. If you take a look, we still see uh, FileBeat is connect is successfully running. So if we take a look at the logs, um, we can see that our connection to Logstash service has been established, which is great. That's good to see. And we can see our logs are being harvested up above here. So FileBeat looks like it's made its connection. Uh, and similarly, if we look at Logstash, it looks like Logstash is up and running fine. So it's up and running, but it looks like it's having some problems connecting to Elasticsearch. So let's take a closer look at uh, Elasticsearch and see what the problem could be. So if we take a look at the, the master zero here, Let's take a look at logs here. So, so it looks like it's it's only been able to discover one of the Elasticsearch nodes and not the two others that we uh, have in our in our cluster. So if we take a look, it makes sense because actually um, this Elasticsearch pod here looks like it isn't in a running state. So if we describe that pod and take a look, we can see uh, zero out of one nodes available. This node didn't match the pod affinity or anti-affinity rule. So if we scroll down a bit, we can see uh, this field here, anti-affinity. So if we take a look, hard means that by default, pods will only be scheduled if there are enough nodes for them, and they will never end up on the same node. So this is a, a good idea if you're running in production uh, and you have a distributed Elasticsearch cluster where you don't want your uh, nodes, your Elasticsearch uh, replicas to be running on the same node because if it goes down, then your whole service goes down. But in our case, we're running locally on a one node cluster. So that's not a concern for us right now. We'll switch this to soft so that we can schedule them on the uh, node that we're on. So I'll run Helm uninstall Elasticsearch to free up all of the resources that we've already created. And then I'll rerun Helm install Elasticsearch and go into the Elasticsearch directory. So now if we run uh, another get pods, we can see all of the pods in our Elk stack are successfully in a ready state, which is great to see. So now if we go to our web browser and we go to that host we set up for Kibana, kubernetes.docker.internal, uh, which is the host name uh, for Docker desktop and we go to it, we can see uh, our Kibana homepage, which is great. Now if we go under Discover, we can see a few warnings on the side about security. We don't need to worry about that uh, in our local environment. But the more important thing is we can see all of these logs that are being scraped from all of the containers in our cluster, which is really cool to see. So if we just open one up, uh, we can see a message coming from it looks like it's in the, the kubernetes default namespace you can see the labels associated with it uh, the host name of the container runtime the image so you get all this great kubernetes metadata and of course the message itself so hopefully you can kind of see the power of this logging solution uh, it takes a little bit of work to set up um, at first, but once it's running in your cluster, you get all of this visibility into every process or every service that's running uh, in your entire cluster. Uh, and the amount of work required to maintain this moving forward is really minimal, and you get all of this great power of, of filtering and, and, uh, and, and everything that the Elk stack provides. So I hope this uh, was a useful walkthrough 
um, and I will see you in the next one.